did it all by himself, it would take several hours for every Yeah. See, see Eugene and Tony and everyone, the um, Banshee did it all by himself. It would take several hours for everyone else. But Andy says he could do it. Yeah, hooked all that up. He did it all by himself. And I don't know how he did that. I don't know how he did that. I don't know what, where goes what. He put that all together. Yeah. Here. Here. All right. It's a 32X, 16-bit Sega. You got all of the 70 games. That's including the Night Trap and Double Switch Motion Picture um, uh, movement. That's real trap doors. Cut off the TV. Well, I know how to cut this phone off. Belt. What? His pants are falling down. Oh. You ain't, I ain't the only one. Mine keeps falling down. Roll your pants away. Mine keeps falling down. Here. Put the belt on. Polly said there's a secret reason why our pants keep falling down. Because I thought, well, I, I used to have that problem when I was skinny. Now I'm, I shouldn't have that problem. She says, Polly goes, that's because I got hips. Maybe because... Is that different? Gotta be different. She says you gotta have what hips. And I go, hips, is that the secret? Yeah, maybe Banshee's lost some weight. Banshee's lost some weight. Ow. Ooh, that hurt. Polly hits you, now you hit. Oh, that smarts. Yeah. B for Banshee. Yeah, I do a to you, like. No, I'll be bruised forever. Here. Yeah. Man, leg. I can't even tell you to put this off. Oh, I lost my glass. What was your pants like, Banshee? Hey, fuck it did. Man, this mask is hard to put on. Inside yeah. down. How did Tony know you put this on? I don't know. Oh, also, don't forget, I'm going to the hotel again in Virginia Beach. Today? You can tell Tony that. Oh, yeah. It'll be twice, Billy. Break twice, down. twice the fun. Oh, so we should have said that, mentioned that one. Get on my mask. I also told him I'm going to Hollow Step, but she didn't say nothing. Except oh. for that, she's going too. She she's wants going? To, she wants to go. Oh, she going? Is she going to she told me what day she's going. Yeah. Like the 10th, I think. The 10th. Something like that. Okay. Scare factor, folks. Boo. Hey, Tommy. I mean, something. Boo. Yeah, I would. I can't do nothing about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see. You got all the water guns and everything. He's having fun. Where are the brothers, Nancy? Down there. Down there. On the black table. On the black table. Somebody. 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 Andy, go tell everybody that we're getting ready to light the. Aren't you short some candles, Mom? Yeah, really. I'm happy. Can you short yourself? He's five. The Mach five. Coach, you ready to go? Probably. DC, is that time for being a couple there? She's five years old. Uh-oh. I know this. Holly's nice. 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 Holly's Happy, 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 happy birthday. birthday. I can't sit there start it in English. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Now blow your candles out. Oh, that was quick. She did that good. Okay, five years old. Be careful, it's popping. Man. I've been doing it wrong all these years. I just blow. She does it like a piano. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Let me go get it.
I've had lots of practice by blowing up 12 candles. Ooh, this is a good candle. Did you ask the guy? 12 candles at once. Uh, I didn't want to learn what you learned how to sing. I had to see that. This is the only way. She wanted to see that. I got to see how to work it. That's like the domino. No. Go ahead. Somebody get it. I told her to do it. I got another Don't record the people, record the food. No uh, yeah. Very funny, Tommy. I uh, uh, ice cream. Oh, somebody take it. Yeah, the cake. What was that? Is that a pick or something? Whoa. It More like a tiger. It was chocolate. You call it the chocolate. Come on, chocolate. So I'm going to go and take my thing. Come on, I'll, I'll save it for you. Donna wants chocolate. Donna wants chocolate. Chocolate. Come on. Nobody. Billy, make sure that nobody takes her seat. Yeah, take it. Yeah, everybody takes their seat. The, no, go sure the ghost takes it. Careful, you got any uh, lip balm or something at home? Lip balm? Please. 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 Yeah, you'll have one. Chocolate, Looks like you have a baby. Yeah. This one's me. That's me. Pour the food. I'll pour the food. Okay. What are you hitting me for? You did that. I did what? Did you did that. Oh, yeah. You just let him go around and hit yeah. people, huh? Daddy, please. Take me. You just pick it on and I'll raise them all. Can I hit you? Can I hit you? Can I hit you back? Hmm? You, yeah, monkey. Monkey butt. You look like a monkey. You. <laughs> you, that's my name. Uh -uh. Why don't you change your monkey? Who monkey? Uh, monkey. Monkey butt. You're a monkey butt, monkey butt. No. You got you like a tail. I called Johnny Monkey Butt. Uh, hey Billy, yeah. I called jo Johnny Monkey Butt this morning. So yeah. you just sit around and so I said Monkey Butt. Uh -huh. oh. mm, yummy, yummy, yummy. Yeah. Oh yummy. yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm making Eugene and Tony hungry right now. Mm -hmm. And Bobby and Wayne. Mm -hmm. But Johnny's gonna do it too. This hey, is more than 3D, it's Billy, 4D. Want some brownies? Yeah, brownies. Here it is, and tell me you do brownies. Uh, How everybody yeah. get a napkin? Because it's uh, brownies. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope Eugene, they have a birthday party, because he might cut to him every day. I get him on tape. That's my song he's got in the hall. Sherry says, well, they do that one, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You ain't seen him in a while. I like how he does those eyes. Do that again. Johnny, do, do that again. Johnny, do that again with your... Johnny, do those eyes again. Mm -hmm. Do you want to have that putting that down and come get me food? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Johnny. Might be waiting on the livery when I get there. No, give me a knock and sleep. Well, I need one. Why? 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 Why?
I'll be good. A young boyfriend and girlfriend, they'll play with Y'all be nice. Yeah, be nice. Look at your sister. There's no more left. There's no more left? Who's on? Be nice too. Oh, what? My, my show? No, you be nice to Matthew. Be nice to Okay, here's more. Matthew, I mean, um, and, um, Mildred Ford. Everybody got something. Be nice! Be Ian! Why are you passing fire? Why are you passing fire? No, he's recording the camera, see? Uh-huh, be Ian! Are you recording, Billy? Yeah. Yeah, that's not a good way to record. You have to have it up and recording the table only. Huh? You know how to elevate it? Yeah, I know, I don't want No, the case you should. Johnny, do it, do it now. Milk. Do it I now. I guess I call him Uncle Mel. Okay, watch your mouth. Watch the kids that's good. Over. That's me. Wipe your hands in your mouth. Wipe it right here. Johnny? Oh. Mom, I got an idea. Johnny can oh, get me. Mom! All right, Johnny. Johnny can get uh, the package to Polly right now. Since he's done. He's doing a magic trick. Johnny, you can get the package to Polly right now. Johnny, you can get your package to Polly right now. Mom, since he's done. He can get the package to Polly right now. Johnny, get your package. Johnny, 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 Johnny
I know it. That's a big card. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know a card was that big. documentary of how to solve the cube we go on step by step. I tell it was either Luke Riley or Kay when I was I, I told him I was gonna do the same thing. And mine. I didn't have mine. The uh Usher's guy. Tony Hearing and uh Thank you. 
I think he saw the camera because he turned around and he aimed his butt at the camera. That's something that uh, Andy would do. And Banshee and Tony and Bobby and Ryan. And now Catherine, little Catherine is doing it. But Andy's got a funny thing. When you look at the moon, I looked at it and I said, yeah, it's the man in the moon. He says, well, that too, Bill, but uh, Andy Troy goes, yeah, but look, the moon's mooning. I said, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> That's cute, man. Very funny. Are you Take them 
I got them being comical and they didn't know it at the time. Will you take your hymnals and turn to hymn number 199. Uh, number 199, Hark the Herald Angels Sing Glory to the Newborn King. Hymn number 199, I stand to say. Prince of Peace.
seated. We want to welcome each one of you to our special cantata and service this morning, The Promise of the King. We appreciate you coming and being here as a part of this service today and trust that your hearts will be greatly blessed. We do have some preliminaries to take care of before we get into uh, the cantata. First of all, we, uh, we need to take an offering, but we'll do that after we recognize our visitors today. We're so glad that you've come to visit us. I know that there are several visitors in the service this morning, and with that being the case, we have something for you. We'd like to ask you to receive it, if you will. And then, if you will, when you get it in your hands, there's a card there. We'd like to ask you to fill out the card, and then um, after the service this morning, if you'll take it out to the foyer, Turn it in at the Welcome Center. There'll be someone there that gives you something very nice in exchange for that. Normally, we, uh, we uh, stand and sing at this time, but because of restraints of time, we're just going to ask our visitors, if you will, please, just to raise your hands so the ushers can see who you are and give you one of these little packets that we have. So visitors, hold your hands up nice and high so the ushers can see you and uh, give you one of these. And then uh, fill the card out, please, and then take it out into the foyer after the service and receive a nice little gift. We have some announcements too that we want to remind you of. Mark, I left the announcements in the front of my Bible. Would you please bring them down here right away? <laughs> um. How to break up the, the dignity and respect of a nice service, huh? <laughs> get my age you forget things. I want to remind you that we're still collecting food for needy families at Christmas time and there's a good supply that's already been collected but if you have some things that you'd like to bring, some staple items, there's a cart out there that's running over, praise the Lord. Uh, but just put it on the floor around the cart and we'll step over it if we put our, our uh, coats on the coat, coat rack out there. If you have any turkeys or anything that's um, perishable items, milk, uh, chickens, anything like that that you'd like to give, we'd like to ask you to keep those, if you will, at home until distribution time. And then this Saturday, on December the 18th, is our church-wide adult Christmas party. Several people have asked about the children coming. There will be a nursery provided, but it's the adult Sunday school classes uh, Christmas party. And we would like for you to sign up for that. We need to have some sort of an idea of how many of you will be coming. And then if you uh, would like to purchase a DVD or VHS of this service this morning or the service last Sunday night of the children's Christmas program, they will be available for $5. And after the service this morning, if you go by the Welcome Center, uh, Mary Lillian will be out there and you can sign up for one of those. I'd also like to invite you to a special Hispanic Christmas program on Thursday night of this week at 7 p.m. Uh, details of that are in the bulletin, so be sure to check the bulletin. And then copies of the proposed budget for our annual business meeting this Wednesday night are on the table at the rear of this auditorium, both the general fund budget and the missions budget. If you'd like to go by and pick up a copy of that to look over before the business meeting, they're available back there. And then this morning, we want to express our Christian sympathy to the Neist family. Um, Ed and Jerry and Vicki, Gore and, and Mrs. Neese, Betty Neese. Uh, Ed's sister passed away early this morning, which would, of course, be Betty's daughter, uh, Brenda Muters Paul. And I know that you want to be in prayer for that family today. Let's look to the Lord. We'll ask the ushers to come to receive the offering. And uh, I'd like to encourage you to give generously this morning as we receive this offering. And then after the offering, we'll turn the rest of the service over to Pastor Carl and the choir from New York. So let's pray. Father, we give you thanks this morning for the privilege that you've given to us to be here together. And how we pray thee, Father, that you'll just bless in a wonderful way in this service. Lord, we bring the Nice family to you today. Ask, Lord, for your comfort in their bereavement. Strengthen them, Lord. Uphold them. I pray, Lord, for uh, Brenda's husband who has survived her. We pray, Lord, that you would also add strength and comfort to her heart, his heart. And then, Father, for this offering today, we thank you. We pray, Lord, that you'll 
uh, bless it for your glory. We ask God that it will be used for the advancement of the work of the ministry here. Use it for your honor and glory. Thank you, Lord, for those who give. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
I'd like to welcome you this morning to our service entitled The Promise of a King. Before we get started, though, we want to make sure that each one of you have in your possession a bulletin this morning. If you don't have a bulletin this morning, would you please raise your hand? We want to get one to you. It's very important that you have one because in it, you'll find an insert. So those of you who have your bulletin, go ahead and look for the insert. It's kind of a reddish color that is uh, has on there the title of the, of the program this morning, The Promise of a King. Of a king. On the front, you'll see an order of the songs, and on the back, you'll see some music written out for you. You want to keep that in your hand throughout the throughout the program. When we get down to the near the end of the program on the song "Christmas Bells Are Gladly Ringing," I'm going to turn around and ask you to join with us in singing uh, one stanza of "Joy to the World," and then two songs later on our final song, "The Birthday of a King." Uh, I'm going to turn around again and ask you to to remain seated, but sing with us on one stanza of "O Come." All ye faithful. All right, so does everyone have a program? All right, very good. Uh, again, the title is The Promise of a King. You know, the, the Christmas season is filled with promise. Uh, there are many promises surrounding the, the Christmas time of year. Uh, nearly 700, actually over 700 years before the birth of Jesus Christ in Bethlehem, God spoke to us and promised through the, the Old Testament prophets that there was a promised king coming. His son, the Messiah, the promised king. He said that this king, his throne would be established forever. He would rule with perfect justice and he would bring great peace. That king and that, that promise was fulfilled some 2,000 years ago with the birth of Jesus Christ, that first Christmas day. The angels in the heavens proclaimed it to the shepherds who went and sought Jesus out and then told it abroad and told everyone of the promised Messiah that had been born. And there was great excitement about that. And that's what promise does. It produces hope. It produces excitement. But the exciting thing was, is that was not the last promise. You see, when the angel of the Lord spoke to Mary before Christ was born, he promised her that, his, that her son, the, the promised king, would save his people from their sins. What a wonderful promise that is. And for those of us who have claimed that promise for ourselves, we know what the wonderful, wonderful thing that is to know that he has paid the penalty for our sins. Well, that promise certainly was fulfilled about 30 years later when Jesus gave his life, that promised king, Messiah, laid down his life, the perfect lamb for our sacrifice. But you know what? The promises keep coming. Because before Christ left this earth to go back in heaven and to wait for us, he promised that he would once again return and take us to himself. See, there are many promises surrounding the Christmas season. That's why we have so much joy in celebrating the birth of Christ. It gives us hope. It gives us uh, happiness to think of what, all that he has done for us who deserve so little. So we hope that this morning will help you to, uh, to remember and to uh, be excited again about that hope. That promised king has come. His name was Jesus. And we honor him and celebrate him this morning and throughout the year. So we hope that this will be an encouragement to you. And I hope that you will again worship your God who has promised us that king. The promise of a king. Hear the word of the Lord to Israel. A king is coming who will judge with righteousness. Who will make decisions with justice. He will be like no other king, for his reign will never end. His throne will be established in love, and his kingdom will encompass the earth. When he comes, you will see the dawn of peace, a peace that will last forever. Have faith, for I will do as I have promised.
With each generation, the people of Israel waited for their king. Like prisoners in darkened cells, they longed for the light of his appearance. Still, they celebrated in God's promise of this king who would redeem them. And they waited in faith for his kingdom of peace. in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land, upon them hath the light shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. <coughs>
There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. And this is the record of John, the voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. <coughs> As the time neared for the promised Christ to be born, 
The emperor decreed that each family pay taxes in its city of ancestry. To comply with this decree, Mary and Joseph, to whom she was pledged to be married, made their way to Bethlehem. Because the city was overflowing with tax-paying visitors, they were turned away at every inn. However, seeing that Mary was about to give birth, a compassionate innkeeper offered them his stable. And while they were there, this child, who was both creator and promised king, was born in this humble setting among his very creation. <laughs> Unaware that its long-awaited miracle had appeared, much of the city slept. But the angels of heaven filled the skies with singing and rejoicing. They announced the king's birth to a band of shepherds guarding their flocks in the fields surrounding Bethlehem. As the shepherds watched the skies with astonishment, a brilliant star lit up the night.
eager to find the king whose birth could command such wonders to appear in the heavens, the shepherds hurried to worship him. As they knelt before the child, how could they know that this king would become both shepherd and lamb? For he would shepherd his people with peace and out of love ultimately become a lamb of sacrifice for their sin.
unable to contain their joy, the shepherds spread the news of what they had been told about this king. Everyone who heard the story was amazed by it. A king of peace, promised of God through the prophets, had been born. The silence of darkness had been broken by the joyous news of a great light. of the promised king's birth spread to regions outside of Bethlehem, and wise men from the east also came to worship him. While shepherds had only their reverence to offer, these magi brought with them precious gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. As we come to worship this king, what will we bring to offer him? The prophet Micah asked himself this same question hundreds of years before God's promise was fulfilled and its answer remains unchanged. Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He hath showed thee, O man, what is good. What doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God?
Today is the day of joy, a day of celebration. As the angels sang to announce the king's birth, we too should sing and spread the news to the world. God's promise has been fulfilled. The king has come. He has come to bring us peace and joy and life. Turn with me in your Bibles, please, to Luke chapter 2. This is probably one of the most familiar passages in Scripture at this time of year when we come to celebrate the birthday of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 8, we have the accounting of the shepherds who um, were spoken to on that night of our Lord's birth by the multitude of the angels that came and gave him a very wonderful announcement. In Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 8, it says, And there was in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping, their, keeping watch over their flock by night. 
And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the birth of our Savior. We're grateful, Lord, for offering to us one of the greatest gifts that has ever been given to mankind. The Lord Jesus Christ, who left the glories of heaven and came all the way here to earth just to die on a cross so we could have the forgiveness of sins. Lord, help us not to forget that this is what Christmas is all about. And as we look about this night, Lord, of the birth of our Savior, may God it be impressed upon our hearts that this was a magnificent night. Speak to our hearts through thy word, we ask in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. <coughs> the night of the Savior's birth is one of the most wonderful nights in all the history of the human race. There was never a night like it before and never will be again. Never. It was a magnificent night, a wonderful night, a, a night to be well remembered. Several things about that night. First of all, it was a holy night. We read here in this passage that the shepherds worshipped him. They came and bowed down in his presence and worshipped him. Did you catch the words of the song that the choir sang in that song, this, is, this holy Christmas night? It said, our day of joy is here again with love and peace and song. Come, let us join the angelic strain with voices clear and strong. Because of the angels' announcements to them, the shepherds knew that this was a holy night. They didn't have a clue how holy a night it actually was, but indeed it was a unique night. It was a holy night. They knelt before a child that they were told was the Christ, the Messiah. The little, but little did they understand that he was a shepherd. And not just a shepherd as they were, but he was the shepherd and the lamb, the lamb of God. John the Baptist saw Jesus approaching him one time and said, Behold the lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And you know that's exactly why Jesus Christ came. He came to take away the sins of the world. He came to take away your sin and my sin. That was his purpose for coming into this world was to relieve us of the burden of our sin. He died upon a cross and shed his precious blood in payment for the guilt of our sin. And you and I today have the privilege of coming to him. Many of you here have already done that. There may be others here to this morning that need to come to Christ and receive him and recognize that he is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. That was a holy night. But you know, it was more than that. It was a night of giving. We read also in the scriptures that the wise men gave him gifts. It says in the book of Matthew, when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Did you also catch the words of the song that the choir sang, fit for a king? What a striking song. I travel to Bethlehem's cradle to kneel at the manger tonight. But what can I bring to honor the king that's worthy of Jesus the Christ? The sages gave gifts of great wonder. They brought treasures both rich and rare. Compared to their gold, what gifts could I, could I hold to give to the Savior there? A heart full of love for his people. A voice that is ready to sing. A life that is willing to give its all. These are gifts that are fit for a king. The only gifts that are fit for a king. The people of ancient Israel asked that same question. 
As a matter of fact, in the book of Micah, in chapter 6, Brother John Charles read this during the narration. They asked this question, Wherewith shall we come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? Wow, what a question. Shall I give the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? The obvious answer to that question is no, of course not. Why not? Because that's what God did. He gave his fruit for the transgression and the sin of our soul, Jesus Christ. Those people of ancient Israel were living in sin and disobedience to God and disobedience to his word. They were not walking with the Lord. And God raised up his prophet Micah to give them warning, to warn them to repent and to bring them back into fellowship with God. That was the message that Micah gave. That these people would repent of their sins and come back into fellowship with a holy God. And under the preaching of Micah, they were brought to great conviction because of their sin. And because of that conviction, they, they sought the Lord and they asked this question, what can I bring to the Lord? What can I bring in payment for my sin? What can I do because I've transgressed against him? What can I do? to appease the wrath of God. That was their question. Well, there may be some of you here today that are asking that question. Maybe you haven't been walking with God as you should. Maybe you haven't even come to Him for salvation and received the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, His Son. And it may be that you're asking that question today. What can I bring to the Lord? Many people have devised many ways of many things to bring before the Lord. Some have thought maybe just a moral life will do it. Or a church membership certificate or a baptismal certificate or something of that nature. But I want to tell you, my friend, there's something more that God requires than that. There's nothing that we can do, nothing that we can bring that God will accept of our own, of the fruit of our own labor or the fruit of our own body. God will not accept that. But you know what? <coughs> That question was answered that was asked by Micah. He has showed the old man what is good and what doth the Lord require thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. There are three things here that God requires. He says you not have to do justly. Well, they had not been very just. They had not been dealing just with their fellow men and they certainly had not been dealing justly with God. In the third chapter of the book of Micah, in chapter 2, God was greatly concerned that they hated the good and they loved the evil. And you may say this morning in your heart, in your mind, as I say that, that's not me. I don't love evil and hate good. But you know, by the very reason of the fact that you walk in disobedience to God proves that indeed you hate that which is good and you love that which is evil. May God help you to see today that God will accept nothing more than to do justly with him and to walk righteously before him and to give your life in full surrender to his will and to his word. And then he says he would, he would accept loving mercy or love mercy. It's the Hebrew word hesed. It appears some 249 times in the Old Testament. It's the word that we often read in the Old Testament, loving kindness. And it has to do with God's loving kindness toward us. But you know, it also relates with our loving kindness toward God. God accepts the gift of loving kindness. The word there's, there's a sensor somewhere. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> like a jack in a box. It's like oh, a jack in a box. Key is secure, man. Uh, caught my attention in the keyless. So the keyless entry door is closed. So Billy, do you think you could pick that one? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> you can pick any cup. You can pick... Well, not every cup. Pick certain brands. Uh-huh. 
If I tied you up and I put that lock on there, you wouldn't be it able to get so out. It looks so familiar. I wouldn't be able to get what it. What a that cassette deck. It looks just like mine. Is that that? Yeah, yeah, underneath the VCR. Oh. It does look kind of like yours. Yeah, it's a slightly different model. RJ probably emailed you because he said, sorry folks for not emailing you, but somehow his, his MSN something yeah. uh, was um, telling, telling something, I don't know. You got it straight. I sent him the tape of your, go your ghost call. and that's just what he's going to think about. I gave him your email address so that way, because I, I told him to send some JPEGs. Yeah, I got to send those pictures to the yacht, to the to the club I'm on. Mm -hmm. um, Yahoo has a group club for people who own escapes, and they got pictures on there, and I'm going to put my pictures up there with the others. Billy, did you break my lock? No. No. Then why won't it open? This thing probably cost um, $30, isn't it? No, $225. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't pay for anything that much. Maybe you want it. Matter of fact, I think Tommy was with me when I bought that. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's when I got my pedal at the pond house. <laughs> what? I like this. You don't have to use a dial or anything. Or a key. Mm -hmm. Well, what if you... Yeah, but how is it how's unlocking? unlocking? That's the thing. I know. Is it, is it a timer that it goes off a certain time? And it goes <sighs> off? Or someone's got a, a, a key to... Oh, Tommy. Huh? Someone's got a key or something. Little... Battery. Oh, no, 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 no. Um, Tommy. Yeah. Do they have a uh, um? Something I'm missing. I'm not paying attention. <laughs> yeah, well, you got that right. <laughs> they have um an all tell place in the mall. Just be sure. Um, well, they have one I go to. You know, um, it's, it's past uh, four more. What used to be four more? What street? Uh, Seems to be a pattern. Yeah, one at Tiffany Mall. Uh -huh. You know, before we get to Kmart. One, two, three. You have four three, more. You have a replica called AJ five, Gators six, uh -huh. Club. Seven, eight, oh, yeah, that's right. There is an It's there. like before Michael. Because, but they don't. Oh, no. Oh, did Billy hear the message on left? Yeah. 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 He said, what, a helicopter? I couldn't make it out, but when he said, I don't know, okay. What was yeah. it? I miss, missed that. When I called from your house, I said, yeah, this is Edelfat calling Fat Billy. He oh, wants you in okay. Afghanistan now. Would with you? your fat buddy, you can block the tanks. Yeah. yeah. So I did leave it. The only one that copied was that he made his own recording. Oh, I see. pretend to be him. I, I, I just... I tried to talk like uh, Dave. <laughs> Tommy played it back at least two times. I tr probably don't got a pair of days right. You're better than me. That's so right. Very funny. He looks like here. I weigh 163. How much does he weigh? Because that's the point you had an overhang. Uh, yeah, overhang. I weigh 110. 110? 110. I weigh 97. <laughs> 97, my foot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your foot weighs 97 pounds? My nephew Eugene. Weighs one no, he puts one. 124, Andy weighs close to 90, and Bobby story weighs about 80. Hey, you'll have to tell your magic friends about this. I couldn't get a lock undone. That's right. Hmm? There's something I'm missing. I would, it don't come with the instruct. Well, I'm sure it does, but nothing in here. Well, I got a question. Why, when it first went beep, beep, you jiggled it, and we're like, we're going to let go? It's startling me. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Just like the keypad incident. Uh-huh. I like when he probably throws the keypad up. 
something. Alright. How stupid can you be? Wait a minute. Uh, Mike's got something. That's what it is. I do. <laughs> He's got a cowboy Can you hat. prove it? I do. Can you prove it? You got something. I know it. You can't prove it. Can't prove I know. It. Hmm. What? Well, Tommy's waving his hand. Maybe he's got it. No. Uh, oh, okay. So you think Tommy has it, huh? No, I'm convinced he don't got it now. Who do you think has it, whatever it is? All right, move your hand, Dave. You're hiding. Hi. No, the other hand. Uh-uh. Well, Mike's hand's free. Uh-huh. Hey, he's got it. Dave's got it. <laughs> Dave's got it. No, I don't. You're smiling. No, I don't. Tommy did something like that, put the heat on me. Yeah. Smile. Here, put the lock in front of your TV yep. and then face me. I took him to low so I Come had to get bags of rocks. All right. Now look, look in my eyes and I will look in your eyes and I bet he'll unlock. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, that must be a strong uh, uh, <laughs> sensor, what do you call it? <laughs> Let's see He'll if I never figure it out. Oh, I'm going to put it way here to do it. All right. Hands are empty. Watch. See if they can walk through the TV. Watch. I'm gonna watch. Walk through the TV? Oh, yeah. I'm going to just... <laughs> right How's that? How's that? You like that? Yeah. You like that, huh? Oh man. <laughs> hmm. I tell you. I tell you what. You give me two hundred dollars, I'll get you one just like that. Mm. That's how much it costs. Yeah. I'm trying to take money up to get. All right, money. all right. I'll make you deal. Um. I'll since your friend. I'll I'll. I'll share the cost of it, and you yeah. you you give me a hundred, I'll pay for the other hundred. Mm. I'll probably find out it ain't a hundred something of you rip off. Really, he ripped you off. Uh, I, I wouldn't would rip you off. I wouldn't rip you off. Mm. You can trust me. How long have you known him? That's what you can If you really want, I can give you. Yeah, I know where that reminds me. I, I can't handle the table fall. Table talk. Got high blood pressure. Yeah. You shouldn't put it. your salt on the table in the first place. I just went in for stuffed up ears, and the doctor said I got all these problems. You got high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. you, you got you got sinus problems. Here's some Zyrtex and preacid reflux. Get away. Get rid of the Gaviston and all this yeah. other stuff. Uh -huh. Here, I'll prescribe you some Vantex. Ah, it's like instant money in our hands. You know. The doctor told him he needed more exercise. Really? Yeah. I took him yeah. load today. I made him do all the lifting of the heavy bags of rock. Uh, heavy bags of rock. I was right. exhausted. You should see him about push the car. Well, the other day I did too. He did me do it too. But, um, and then lay in salt wing tractor where uh, I go. Anyway. You know, it still didn't do <laughs> it. It didn't even have to unlock it to do it. <laughs> right. I was wondering when, when that was going to happen. <laughs> Am I hitting something? I don't know. Here, here, give me it. I'll show you how to unlock it. See, there's a secret switch on here. And yeah, you, it, you see, what you do is, is, see, what you do is right here, you take it. I know they got battery it, operated you levitation. Well, I'm going to hold it like this. And you just move your thumb just across, just like that, and it cuts the switch on. And then I like it. It's simple as that. Now you try it. Try it. Try it. Yeah, I like to get, just run get him on that shocking book again. And you know, oh, I don't it. remind me. Tommy had some of my niece and nephews with that. Put the shocking book and light it. Okay. I'm not doing it right. Here. Give it to me. I knew it was going to work. <laughs> See? It worked. I ran my thumb across and it worked. You got your own fingerprint, like a kid that has your own sensors. It is not doing it right. There's a switch on there. There's a switch on there. There's a switch on there. That's how I did it. I, I ran my thumb across that switch and it flicked it over. It's like, you know, like the metamorphosis thing where it looks smooth and there's no way out or in. I feel bombarded Twilight Zone about this metamorphosis. Because Mike Rock talked about it in the Bible, metamorphosis, butterfly. Uh -huh. I was thinking of the hawk. I didn't say it, but another grown-up guy says, just like the hawk. And I said, 
I wasn't going to say it, but you said it, and you said it. Yeah. I, you know, I still can't. I still can't figure out how he drinks his chocolate milk. I can't. Ugh. Green chocolate milk. Yeah, good. It tastes just like Hershey's. I had a green chocolate milk. I had a glass of it the other night. Yeah, I like right. how it's, I like cho it's probably chocolate with green. But no, it looks no, it. But no, it's right. sick about it. Right. After you're finished, because he's finished, and he rinse out the cup, some green stain come up with water. Yeah, molded water. Yeah, that ain't talk about. It was like, get it away from me, Tommy. Looks like mold. I remember that. And it does. And Tommy says, you're in your ketchup. I like it. He goes, and I said, yeah, you like well, that. That's chocolate. That's why he likes it. And you said, Andy, well, ketchup. That's why he likes it. And it shook his head. Yeah. yeah. I was saying, Dave likes green ketchup, not green milk. Yeah. Uh, he, he said, that don't compute, don't make sense. <laughs> he shook his head like. Okay, who's got this big, big, big thing to this? What's, thing? what's the matter? I'm convinced. <laughs> Tommy does. Oh, he had it. Went ahead and done. Got I remember when I get it real good. Oh my holy shit. Lock it, Bill. We have to lock it. I thought I locked it. Come on, Tommy. Ah, 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 that good one, Tommy. Get it right. Uh, <laughs> I didn't expect it to go off because you put it in a drawer. Oh, yeah, that was a big one. That was a good kid, Tommy. I'm, not, I'm, I'm ready for it now, but I wasn't the other time. He scared me a good time right there. I scared Andy, so he had time to get me there. I got out of the bathroom. Ah. Well, we still long. got a long enough time for him. You know what? Oh, you, know, yeah. you know what Banshee did? I can't believe it. What? Rams down no. my room. Such a, such a oh, he, that he, too. You're sitting down here. He put his foot here, right? Yeah. And Billy, come out. Get out. Oh, <laughs> get out yeah, one foot. One foot like that. They ransacked my room too. It was like, oh man. Mm -hmm. They took a lot of my magic little trinkets. I don't mind that. I didn't know he took my lock, uh, uh, key, but I looked at it. I said, you can have it. And Bancy went and ran back. He tore Billy's room completely apart. Mr. Royce said I have to get a lock somehow for that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Now I gotta straighten it all out of him. Think fun taking the money in there too. I, I but I know what would unlock it. What? Say. I am fat. You know what I'm like. Oh, uh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah right, say right. It. Just say it. Give her a I'll get a better way. Who to be fat? No. Have to say, I'm fat. I'm fat. <laughs> <laughs> Voice command? Yeah, that would be interesting. Well, they got computers that way. Yeah. Well, they got, a, they got a cell phone I'm looking into that you can dial with your voice. Right. It has voice recognition. I gotta be over. <laughs> you never are. Keyless security. See, keyless, that's the trick. Someone has a device. Because it's not. I don't know what you're talking about. You're hiding something, baby. You haven't been showing that hand for the longest time. Uh, ah, you're waving that, this hand on My hand's sore, okay? Yeah, My sore. hand's sore, that's why I'm keeping it down there, because it's sore, I can't lift it up. It's, look, it's it's broke. My arm is broke, okay? That's like Andy, 12-year-old, going, Oh, my back, I feel like an old man. I'm getting old. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, uh, yeah. My hand, my hand broke. If you're so suspicious, why don't you walk around the back and see what I got in my hand? Mr. Smarty Bitches. Okay. Yeah, why don't you do that? And you move it up front, see? <laughs> yeah, see? What's the matter? Put a hand in the cookie jar. I don't have nothing. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm just Indian, even though I wasn't an Indian. I was Indian. I was a cartoon. Five. I five. Now I go over here and go back there. I can't win. Uh, it's a catch-22. No, you can't, can you? It's a catch-22. Yeah, yeah. Here, watch. I'll let you see both my hands. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, both the hands. Yeah, right. Yeah, both the hands. What's the matter? Why did you try to lock Because I was close to, I thought maybe you had it in your hand and then it went off. <laughs> That's right, Billy. We got you on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
definitely. <sighs> I want to show um, Mike that video. <coughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I think it might give him some ideas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Now, all, all, all I need look, is some rope. Look, uh -oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, I need oh, yeah. rope to tie you up really, really good. Um, um, I'm about to say rope. Yeah, you got to have your socks on. No. Yeah. Ow. Gabe, I like one time, said, what's wrong with my shoes? They're brand new. I, I was cracking up when he said that. Eh, some people are like that. Yeah, hello. Is this Tommy and Tommy and his voice activator? It sounds like Darth Vader or an alien that tricked my nephew and niece. Niece. Nephew, nieces, niece, Tommy and Yuki. Belly. My dad said that much. Come on. Yeah, all right, then. You're carrying a spare tire around. Oh, now you have to. 